Hello there. So in this video, I'm going to show a quick tutorial on how to get your character or model from VoxEdit into Light Tracer for a presentation render. To start with, we need to load up our model or character. I'm going to use this guy. So generally, you can just for feedback, take a screen grab of this and post it to get an idea. But the basic lighting is not very pretty. So we're going to use Light Tracer to use ray tracing, get a nicer look to the model. So I'm going to choose File export and i'm going to use the export gltf format this will export the model and the animations for this character you can see down here it says gltf and we are done so now we need to open light tracer to load in our model so this is how light tracer normally looks when you first open it i'm going to just run through this pretty quickly to show you uh, some of the more important features of light tracer so up here on the top left we will load our scene queensguard.gltf. So we can either replace the current scene or add to it. Over here, we have the scene explorer. This is where all your models go. If we replace, it will remove all of these and place your model, your character in here. And if we hit add, it will keep what's already in the scene and add your character to it. So we're gonna choose replace. So the only thing it replaces is the model that was in the scene here. It does not replace the lighting. So you'll notice that the character is black whenever I spin or move him in the viewport. As soon as I let go, it then renders that still image. So be aware that it's no reason to worry if your character is black, like so when you hit play, for example, when we want to render out our animation, it will look like this in real time. But as soon as you render, each image will render like so. First things first, let's change the background. So to change your background, we work over here in the environment tab and we have our image. If we choose to rotate, it affects the lighting, as you can see on the character using the HDR image. To change that, you can use manage maps. You can just choose another uh, environment like so, and you'll see the lighting in this case because of the terracotta is more red on the character. So it's always these different effects you can have with each of these interior or exterior scenes. If you want to remove the background showing the image in that blurry format, we can choose down here gradient on their backplate. We can also choose image if you want to load one up and none will give you the HDRI map. So using the gradient, I'm going to scroll down and here are the two colors that are currently used by the gradient. I'm going to change these. A light blue and um, a lighter green, maybe. And there's our background color. Another thing you might want is some shading on the floor. So to add a floor, you will have to add new models in here. If we go to the plus button here within our viewport area, you'll see we have basic shapes, model stands and settings. And the model stands is what we want to look at. We're going to use the square floor. You can also use the circle. What these do is they create a invisible floor. So you'll see we have some shading below the feet, some ambient occlusion where the light can't, can't quite reach, so it's a little darker. And the same goes for bounce light. We can also add more of these if we want, but be aware that every time you add a floor in, it adds a new model to your scene. So you might have to clean things up in your scene explorer. But say, for example, you want to use the turntable. We click on that, and as you can see, it's a little confusing what's going on here because we have the square, which is sort of see-through and using the backplate, and we have the uh, turntable. If we delete the square floor, you choose the X where it says scene floor, hit delete, and there is our turntable floor. We're going to delete that one and bring back in the other. Okay, so let's choose square floor again, and we're back to where we were. So there's some more settings in here that you can play around with to change the lighting. You can also choose a HDR image that will give you a stronger shadow. There's one because of the sunlight, we have quite a strong shadow here. To change the location of the light, you can rotate it around using the rotation setting. There's some more settings here. Um, I'll let you play around with those, but I'm gonna to return to a slightly more default looking lighting. There's additional settings for things like bloom um, and so on, which you'll find over here in uh, rendering. So you got bloom and maybe you might want to turn the intensity of that up. That will have a knock on on stronger lights. We also have your watermark. My suggestion is to go on the internet and find a GIF or a PNG with a transparent background of the image you want so that it will look like this where there's no clear borders on your image. Then you can load that image up and you can place it using these settings here. So for each render, I tend to just tweak the location depending on either the pose of the character or the animation so that this doesn't sit over them. 
if this, for example, is done and you're happy with your setup, you can then choose this button here in the top middle and choose PNG and you can render out your image. So let's call this Queen's Guard underscore render. So that just tells me that this is a, an image render as opposed to an animation and choose save. So that will save out just this image as you see it here. If on the other hand, you want to export out an animation, you can go over here and choose view. You have your animation drop down here. So these are all the animations that were exported with the character, the model. Say I choose taunt. If I click play here, it will play the animation. And as I mentioned before, because it's playing real time, we're not getting the nice lighting. So if I pause it somewhere in between, this is what each frame will look like. If we choose a loop, what will happen is when we want to play, in this case, turntable, turntable looks like this. Our animation will play it real time. What your default though is a stretch. And what that does is it plays your animation over the full rotation, which means it's going to look a lot slower depending on the speed of the rotation. So we always make sure to turn that to loop and then we get real time animation. So the character will play back however many times over the course of the loop. We also have something called swing, which personally I don't like too much because it does this strange camera movement. So I'm going to stick to turntable, but what I do like is I like it when, when we see it from behind like this, that it sweeps by quicker so that we spend more time on the front of the character. And the way to change that would be in here. This is how the animation plays. It's linear, which means it rotates around 360 degrees at exactly the same rate. So as I hit play, the turn is exactly the same speed the whole way around. I want it to go slow at the start which hopefully is the character, if I scrub this one back here, is the character facing forward and fast when we see the rear of the character. So it should go quicker here. To do that, I'm gonna change the linear to quad in out. I think cubic in out will do the same thing, but this is slow, fast, slow. That's the movement of the camera rotation now. So as I hit play, you'll see he moves slowly, picks up pace, and then slows down again. So if you really want the character to be facing dead on straight at the beginning of the animation, you can go back to the beginning of your animation using here the video recording section, choose the character's global root, choose this move icon. This will also show you rotate and scale. So we go to rotate and I'm just going to use the Z axis to rotate the character till he's facing straight on. So these are just a few additional tips for refining your scene. So now when we deselect him, we go back to view, and under the video recording settings, we hit play. Now he begins in the slowest part is when he's facing the camera. So there's a lot of different little controls you have like this. One last thing before we hit the save video button down here is how long it takes to render one shot. You'll see this green bar running across the top of your scene. That's how long it's taking to render just this one frame. So you can imagine that multiplied over how many have I got here? 192 frames. So I'm going to quicken that up because generally I showcase my stuff as GIFs. So I tend to lose a lot of the prettiness in the GIF just due to compression. So what I do is up here where it says render and then next to it, we have SPP, which is the samples per pixel. I'm going to drop that down to 50, five zero, hit enter. And now when I rotate, you'll see this green bar goes a lot quicker when I hit stop. And there's one frame finished. And again, one frame finished. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to render this and I'll speed up the video so you can see the end result. So to do that, you hit save video and you choose where it is you want to export. I'm going to export it to the same place I exported the image render. You can see here Queensguard render. So this is going to be called Queensguard video and I'll hit save. And now it'll start rendering out each scene. So this is real time, pretty fast. And I'll speed up the rest. Okay, so now that's rendered, let's have a look at the finished product. So this is the finished video. Normally I would convert this using something like the website easygif.com. If you just type in like video to GIF or something like that into your Google uh, browser, then you will probably find it as your first results. So you load up this video, you convert it to a GIF, and then that you can post on something like Discord. So let's also have a look at the finished rendered image. So this is the PNG. And as you can see here, it's nice for presentation purposes. Let's have a quick look at some of the other settings in Light Tracer for your final render. So for example, 
you may want to have um, a 16 by 9 aspect ratio for your background or your scene. So over here on the rendering resolution, you can change that to 16.9. I'm just going to click these arrows to hide the option bars aside. So this is what that would look like. In this case, of course, then you can return to your watermark under rendering and you can scale it up, place it wherever you want. You have a lot more space for more text or more models. So one more thing we can do is we can turn this into a template scene. So all of our lighting settings and render settings will remain. Uh, to do that, I'm going to choose the root global here and delete it for our character. And that will get rid of our character, but keep our scene. So now we can go up here and save this template scene. Let's use Light Tracer template scene here. Save over that. So now what that means is if we were to restart Light Tracer. So now we can load in our template scene. So we're going to choose load scene. I'm going to use this, the template scene that we just saved, open it, and we're going to replace everything. So as you can see, this is now the settings that we just had before for the Queen's Guard, but with no models in the scene. So let's add in a different model. So I'm going to go to load scene. Uh, let's choose the cop. GLTF file, choose open. And in this case, we're going to add it to the scene, not replace, add it. And as you can see again, everything remains the same. And now we have our new model ready for rendering or animation. We can change our animation here under the view settings. Um, let him dance. And there you go. I hope that's helped.